raise your hand if you like to be served. Be honest. I personally like it. When I ask someone if they would be willing to get me a glass of water and they do it, I love it. Now, raise your hand if you like serving others. Yeah, not as many of you raised your hands for this one. Did you know that serving others is something that Jesus tells us to do? Faith is trusting God enough to do what he says. And today, we're talking about how God tells us to serve and love others. So today, I want you to remember this one thing. I will have faith and serve others. We're talking about being mountain movers, and it requires us to have faith in God, to trust him. And how much faith do we have to have to move mountains? Well, let's look at our memory verse for this month together. It says this, I tell you the truth. If you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. Matthew 17, 20 B. Having the faith of a mountain mover isn't something to hide. It's really not for us. It's to be used as God intended it to be used, as a tool for serving other people. When we become self-centered with our faith, it grows cold. Like when our prayers become all about us and not about other people. We often think of faith as something that we can wield to do and get what we want. Uh, I don't like this obstacle, this mountain, and so here's my solution. I just need to have some faith. But that's not really how it works. Faith is trusting God and obeying him. Now, I don't know about you, but I've tried to get things my way. God, if you would just do this one thing for me, then I'll never do that other thing again. I'll never sin. I'll never lie. I'll never cheat. I'll never hurt somebody's feelings. Instead of us making it about ourselves, we should be loving others and serving other people. So as we follow Jesus, our faith should serve as a catalyst that prepares us into loving service. When we see other people hurting, whether it's physically or emotionally, we don't ask God for help just for ourselves. Instead, we act in love. Faith simply requires that when God has given us an opportunity to serve another person through love, we do so. And we see in John 12, when Jesus is riding into Jerusalem before his death on the cross, that people were making their faith in Jesus and serving him all about themselves and what they wanted. They had this mountain of self-centeredness. We've all dealt with that. We're human. We're selfish creatures. But the great thing is that we have the best example of serving, Jesus. We're going to read from John 12, and I want you to listen for Jesus being a servant and the people making it all about themselves. But first, I want to set up the scene for you. So, the people have just seen Jesus raise a dead man named Lazarus back to life. So they're full of expectation of what Jesus is going to do next. But the people didn't understand that what was going to happen next. It, it's about time for the Passover celebration. So Jesus is headed toward Jerusalem along with a great crowd of people for the celebration. And as the crowd recognized Jesus... We read this in John 12, verses 12 through 13. A large crowd of Passover visitors took their palm branches and went down the road to meet him. They shouted, praise God, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the King of Israel. You see, all the people thought that Jesus was coming to them as a conquering king. Uh, and that would not have been hard for them to think that. If I had just seen Jesus raise Lazarus from being dead several days and now he's up and walking around, I would have been pretty excited about what Jesus would do next as well. I sure would not have thought that the next thing he was going to do was be put to death on the cross. The people were looking for a king who would set them free from Roman rule and deliver them. They were looking for a national leader who would restore the nation of Israel back to its former glory days. They were looking for someone to fulfill the prophecies that they had heard. They've seen Jesus' miracles. They've heard his teaching. So surely 
He's going to take over the throne of Rome and now become the reigning king of Israel. No more troubles, no more disaster. But they missed a really important piece of God's plan. The prophecy in Zechariah. Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is a righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. Zechariah 9.9. As the people were laying down their palm branches and shouting praise, Jesus finds a donkey to ride on, fulfilling this prophecy, but take a closer look at it. Yet he is humble. They are looking for this great conquering king, and Jesus is about to humble himself to the point of death on the cross. Jesus' death is the ultimate sacrifice for us. He showed his love by dying on the cross for us. And he sets an incredible example for us to follow, to love others more than we love ourselves. During this moment, some Greeks from the crowd wanted to meet Jesus. They asked the disciples if they could make that happen. So they go and ask Jesus, and Jesus responds with this. Jesus replied, now the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. John 12, 23 through 24. In this moment, Jesus has rock star status. The crowds are applauding and praising him. People are wanting to meet him. And often in a moment like this, we can be tempted to listen to our own press and think that we are really something. Jesus instead stays very humble and focuses on why he has come to serve others through giving his life on the cross. And Jesus even tells that he came to serve. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Mark 10:45. I wish that it came naturally for everyone to have the same attitude of Jesus. I wish we just automatically had a servant's heart, but it's not the norm for humans. We have to work at it. We have to keep our attitude in check and we have to ask God to give us a servant's heart. In that moment on the very first Palm Sunday, Jesus knows that he is serving. He's obeying God the Father by giving his life on the cross and paying the penalty for sin. The people are like paparazzi and they want to meet Jesus. I mean, who wouldn't? I would have been right there with them wanting to meet him, but they lost sight of the big picture of what Jesus was really there to do. So Jesus says this, those who love their life in this world will lose it. Those who care nothing for their life in this world will keep it for eternity. Anyone who wants to serve me must follow me because my servants must be where I am. And the Father will honor anyone who serves me. John 12, 25 through 26. For us to follow Jesus is to be where he is, living life the way he did. That means we're not living in selfishness. We're not trying to gain power and boast about ourselves. Instead, we're living in humility, not thinking of ourselves as better than anyone and we're serving others in love. Ask God to give you a servant's heart and see how he empowers you to do it. How would that change your world, your relationships? Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to humble yourself like Jesus did? Instead of letting that mountain of pride and self-centeredness get in the way, be a mountain mover this week and show love to others. Let's not complicate our faith. Faith is simply trusting God enough to do what he says. And he's telling us to love others by serving them. And you can do this. When you feel those moments where you don't want to serve, stop and say a quick prayer. Ask God to give you a servant's heart. And as you're going about your week, look for moments where you can serve Jesus by serving others. Help move the mountains that they're dealing with in life. Serve Jesus by serving others.